You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Right now, officers are still looking for the teenage suspect. Police say shot two people in a Fayetteville Walmart Friday night. There's been a lot of activity in the search since it happened. Christy Diaz joining us live outside the Walmart with the latest. Christy. Good morning. There is still an active, constant search for that suspect. And crime scene state tape still covers the doors where this all happened. You can also see a patrol car sitting right outside these doors. Police say an employee shot a 19-year-old and injured a 9-year-old girl right there at those at that entrance. As of this morning, that suspect still on the run, assumed to be armed and dangerous. This is a picture of the man police have been searching for since Friday night. This is 19-year-old Adrian Jelks, a Walmart employee. A accused of shooting and killing 19 year old and Travis Holt and Tavius Holton a stray bullet hitting that nine year old girl. She is expected to survive. Now the last update from police was Saturday afternoon in a statement where officers said their efforts and resources remain solely focused on capturing Mr. Jelks. Walmart also released a statement saying they're working with law enforcement to assist them in any way they can. Now police do not believe the shooting was random. So we are asking questions about the connection between the suspect and the victim. There is already one woman in custody for being party to a crime. But as of this morning, the search continues for Jelks, who is now wanted for aggravated assault and murder. In Fayette County, Christy Diaz, 11 Alive News. I'm Mariana Meniz off of Mapleton Parkway southeast at the Upland townhomes. 14 residents this place after a fire started at these townhomes, damaging three townhomes. 14 residents this place this morning. Now, a resident, he shared video of with us the moments he rushed out of his apartment when the fire started. Cobb County firefighters arrived in minutes to what they believe it was a grease fire and evacuate the building where the flames started and the ones around it. Thankfully, everyone made it out safely, but the residents are now without a home. We know the Red Cross, they were here on the scene helping those people. At this time, it's still unclear exactly what started the fire. Reporting live from Mapleton, I'm Mariana Manise for 11 Alive News. Time now, 649. Right now, we're learning more about a deadly shooting investigation in Atlanta on Sunday evening. Police responded to James Jackson Parkway outside of a buy low supermarket and found a 33-year-old man with a gunshot wound. He later died at the hospital. While investigating, police were told a 16-year-old girl had also been shot and was walking out to a fire station on Hollywood Road. She is in the hospital this morning. Investigators believe these incidents are related. No word on suspects as of now. And an update to a story we first brought to you in December. A teen is now facing charges in a Texas crash that left six members of an Alpharetta family dead. 18-year-old Luke Raciker was arraigned on charges of intoxication man slaughter and possession of marijuana. This crash happened on a Toon Lane Road in Johnson County, Texas. According to the Texas Department of Public Safety, two 17 year olds crossed into the opposite lane in a no passing zone and hit the family. This morning, AT&T is offering free credit monitoring service after millions of customers data was leaked to the dark web. Some of that data leaked includes personal information like social security numbers. AT&T says the leak happened nearly two weeks ago with more than 7 million current customers and 65 million former customers impacted. And that was a look at your top headline. All right, some clouds to start us off on this April 1st, Chesley. Yeah, clouds and, you know, those following numbers up there yesterday got up to the 5,000 count and likely will be up there again today. We're talking about that tree pollen, folks. You're talking about your pine, oak, sweet gum, mulberry, sycamore. Yeah, those things that's going to bug you half to death. We're looking at uh, grass low, weeds low, and mold was low yesterday as well. So just know pollen is out there. We're in the high season now. We're looking at clouds overhead. That's not pollen. <laughs> that's clouds overhead right now. We'll see a few breaks here and there. May get some slivers of sunshine, but don't look for too much today. It's going to rain cloudy and we'll have about a 20% chance or less for an isolated shower or or two to pop up in our area. I'll be, I think that comes probably by noon today and early afternoon. Looking at temperatures in the 60s, it's a mild start for us. Looking at 65 degrees right now in Atlanta, 63 Marietta, 62 degrees Duluth, 67 is the warm spot over to Peachtree City, 57 degrees right now in Clayton. The only 50 degree reading out there. Long sleeves for today, you can do that, right? It is spring break. We're looking at 81 degrees for the high temperature. Again, with that slight chance for an isolated shower too. Winds out of the southwest.
west at about 10 miles per hour or less today. Got a front stationary up here to the north of us. Uh, we got that flow coming in, that southerly flow, bringing in that low level moisture, but also heating our temperatures up as well. Tracking a front, it's off to the west. You can't really see it on the map right now, but that will advance east and bring a better chance for the rain starting tomorrow for us. The severe weather threat today is off to our west, Oklahoma City down through Dallas. You got that tan area there that's just up to the north. That is an enhanced risk, a level three out of a possible five. Uh, for today, you're looking at uh, that same system making its way toward us by tomorrow. Notice the enhanced risk or level three threat over northern parts of Alabama, northward into uh, Nashville and into Louisville. We have that yellow area over us, mainly over our northwestern counties. That's a level two threat or a slight risk for severe weather. It includes Georgia's Rome. Once you get down toward Atlanta, Athens, southward, a level one threat, marginal risk for severe weather. And the major threat with this would be damaging winds. We'll have to watch out for that, especially through the overnight. That's the way it times out right now. Stop this by 2 o'clock. You can see where we could have an isolated shower, too. If you happen to receive one of those, know that it won't last long and it will be on the light side. It's out of the way. We'll keep the clouds in place overnight tonight going into Tuesday. That's where we'll start off in the morning. Mostly cloudy skies will stay that way through the afternoon. It won't be until after 8 and 9 o'clock that that line of showers and thunderstorms starts to enter our state. Uh, we'll be with us through the overnight, and you could be awakened by a rumble of thunder or two. Again, the major threat would be damaging winds associated with these thunderstorms. Can't rule out a brief tornado or some hail with this, but should be out of the way by the time you're waking up on Wednesday morning by the afternoon we get that sunshine back in here uh, for your Wednesday but it will be cooler we go from the 80s today tomorrow and then down to the low 60s for highs to round out the week and into the weekend this morning a three-year-old is recovering after bullets went flying near a historic Atlanta Park police say it happened on Vine and Thurman Streets Northwest on Easter when officers got to Rodney Cook Senior Park they found a three-year-old child grazed by a bullet that child was rushed to the hospital alert and breathing no word yet on the motive for the shooting or who was involved Two women have died following a police chase in Fayette County. Here's what we know this morning. This happened on Highway 54 on Sunday. Fayetteville says that they attempted to stop a car with a tag that belonged to another vehicle. During that stop, the driver took off leading police on a chase. When officers used a maneuver to stop the car, both the driver and the passenger died. The incident is now under investigation. This morning, a bill that will hold squatters accountable is on Governor Brian Kemp's desk. It is called the Squatters Reform Act. It aims to give property owners more rights to evict someone who has illegally taken over their home. Mel Keaton is the president of the Hampton Oaks Homeowners Association, and he says at one point, 18 homes in his neighborhood had been taken over illegally. We had situations like armed robbery. We got a couple of prostitution rings going on. We had uh, drug dealing going on. So the bill will speed up the eviction process from months to just days. Squatters will also be held financially liable for the time that they occupied the home and any damages. And anyone who fakes a rental agreement, they could face charges or even jail time. And right now, Airbnb is making some pretty big changes to its cancellation policy to better cover unforeseen events. Airbnb says it will provide cancellation and refund support for guests if an unexpected major event occurs. That includes national disasters, travel restrictions, or whether it will not include illness or injury. This policy will override a host own cancellation policy. It does go into effect for all reservations on June 6th. Talk about good timing. It's spring break for so many districts starting today, and so families will be hitting the road. Gas prices are slightly down in time for your trip. AAA just released its weekly report. This morning, the state average is 332 a gallon. That's down three cents from just last week. Still a little bit up from a month ago, about 12 cents higher. Tonight is your next big chance to win big in Powerball. The jackpot inching closer to a billion dollars. Right now it's 975 million with a cash take home of 474. The drawing's at 11 tonight, so make sure you get your ticket more than an hour ahead of time. Chesley? Sure, we're looking at temperatures uh, really warming up today. We'll be in the 70s by the time we get to noon. 73 degrees will be our temperature on our way to the 80s, right around 81 degrees, your afternoon high. We're going to hold on to the clouds for much of the day. There could be an isolated shower, too, but it's only a 20% chance or less. Most of us should stay dry. 80 degrees by 6 o'clock, going back down into the 60s for overnight lows. We'll see a better chance for some rain and thunderstorms coming our way by tomorrow with temperatures right around 80, and then we cool down behind that front for the rest of the week. The Jonesboro High School Majestic Marching Cardinal are in D.C. this morning. In just a few hours, they'll be performing at the White House Easter Egg Roll. Later this year, the band will be at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade.
Food critic Keith Lee is coming back to Atlanta, everybody. It is the Redemption Tour. The TikToker recently announced the tour, adding Atlanta as one of its stops. In case you don't remember, Lee ranked Atlanta last on his previous school tour, mostly because of bad customer service, but he did highlight some hidden gems that have been booming in business since. And in some reviews, he was empty-handed this time because he didn't get food from the places. All mm -hmm. right. Let's do better. Come on, Atlanta. <laughs> let's do better. Have a great start to April. See you tomorrow.